Well, hi, I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich, and I like to talk about leadership and engineering. Hey, uh, in this video, I want to uh, talk about probably what's the most fundamental concept in leading engineers, or more generally, in leading experts. To put that yet another way, the issue is, how do you lead people who know more than you do? And uh, that's a very uncomfortable thing for a lot of people. And indeed, you know, the old school of, of uh, uh, management leadership, you know, is kind of like uh, uh, the bosses are the people who know the most and the people who work for them know less almost by definition. In fact, if you go all the way back to uh, Frederick Taylor, who kind of the father of the sort of uh, science of management and all this stuff, kind of the key figure at the Industrial Revolution, you know, he would he wrote he actually wrote stuff like, um, you know, the managers do the thinking and the workers do not. You know, it was like we don't want workers who think we want workers who are robotic kind of thing. And, um, you know, as an engineer, <laughs> you don't want that at all. I mean, that's sort of dehumanizing. And, and there's a whole body of literature uh, uh, related to a, a, a theory called the followership theory that kind of gets into that. We'll do a video on that. But. For now, the, the point is, um, you know, the, the, the new reality is there's always going to be um, uh, engineers who work for you who know more than you. And if that isn't the case, you're, you're a terrible manager because, you know, in, in, in part of the, the uh, characteristic of, of, of the workplace today is systems have gotten so complex that it's now impossible for one person to understand all aspects of a system. And, you know, when I started my career in the 80s, it was still at a time where s systems were simple enough where, you know, a project I was leading, I actually understood pretty much all of the product. And, and now that's just not even vaguely possible, you know, to give you a, a, a specific example. You know, the, <clears throat> the pump we make at work has a Bluetooth interface. You know, there's there's uh, so much complexity in the Bluetooth specification that I'm not even sure it's possible for one person to understand all of Bluetooth, let alone all of the pump. So anyway, so the new reality is, uh, you know, you will have people who um, uh, know more than you. In fact, you want people who know more than you. And then the question becomes, you know, how do you sort of deal with that? And, and, and you know, some of you may even be like, well, duh, that's just how it is. What's, what's there to deal with? And, and here's, here's what's to deal with. Um, for some people, uh, it's common among engineers, is, you know, our identity is wrapped up in kind of like, you know, you, you, among your friends, you, you know more than they do, you know. So you, you go on a, you know, you go to an air show or something, and you're the guy that knows more about the airplanes. And you, you go here, and you're the guy that knows, you know, the, the details of the rules for baseball or, you know, something like that. So you, you kind of get your self-image involved and you're the one who's knowing. And so what some engineers, ex, uh, engineers experience when they transition in management is it totally messes with their identity. And the way some people uh, cope with that is they, they do things, usually uh, without really being aware they're doing it, well, they're trying to reinforce the idea that they really do know more. And it becomes sort of a king of the hill thing. And, and um, you know, they just, they just can't abide with the notion that, uh, that they know more, that uh, someone who works with them might know more. And, you know, of course, today, as, you know, as a software guy, I mean, everybody who comes out of school, you know, the degree in computer science knows more about phone apps than I do. They know, and they know more about big data than I do. And, and uh, especially because I kind of went the route where I, you know, my, my undergraduate and master's from mechanical engineering, you know, that, that I'm pretty good at embedded software, but even stuff like, you know, artificial intelligence, compiler theory, there, there's just a whole bunch of stuff that every person, every computer scientist who's ever worked for me simply knows more. So, okay. So is that bad? No, that is exactly what you want. You want to hire to, to fill your, your gaps. Now, you you know, as I talked about in other videos, you, you do have to have an expertise. I mean, there needs to be something that you are a true expert in, and otherwise you're going to have trouble leading. But, um, you know, maybe it's helpful to, to turn that around the other way. I mean, if you're, if you're an engineer and you come work for somebody who doesn't want to, 
uh, sort of acknowledge whether they're aware of this or not. You know, they just can't deal with the fact that you know more than them. I mean, that's miserable. You have expertise. You have specific knowledge. And it, it's really demotivating, um, you know, it, it's sort of dehumanizing almost, you know, to, for people to treat you like you don't know anything. And, and of course, what you know is if, you know, you're coming into a workplace, you, you don't, most engineers don't come into a workplace thinking they, they know more than everybody. You know, it's pretty common. You come in and, you know, there's some things you bring to the table, but you're kind of excited to learn the new environment and, and you know, the specifics. And, and, you know, you're really wanting to come and learn and, and somehow that's interpreted as, you know, you're a threat or something to, to, to people who just don't get leading, leading um, experts. At any rate, so the first thing I would say on this topic is, you know, you, you have to lean into the fact that having people who know more than you is um, not only typical, it's not only unavoidable, it's highly desirable. I mean, that's what you want if, you, if you're just hiring people who know less than you. I mean, you're the worst manager ever. I know people like that. I know I've worked for people like that. I mean, it's miserable. At any rate, so, you know, it just, just is part of, you know, being a human being, you want to respect people. You want to respect other people. And when you refuse to acknowledge someone might know something you don't, you know, that's, that's just so disrespectful. Um, okay, so how do, you, how, do you, how do you deal with it? Well, and a couple things. One is to recognize that just because they know something specific doesn't mean you don't have anything to offer. I mean, that, you know, that may be how it feels and, you know, maybe what you're worried about, but that's, that's crazy talk, okay? So, you know, your, your job as is, is leading is, you know, you maybe you're integrating things, you're sort of making sure, okay, you know, we got to have an a electrical circuit that does this, we've got to have the software that does that. I mean, you know, part of leadership is kind of making sure all the pieces get together and, you know, you don't need to know how to design, you know, some part of an electric circuit or, you know, write some complex software or something, but but you do kind of have to worry about the, you know, making sure they all, they all, uh, play together and that they you know meet specifications and things like that. So there's there's still a role, a very very important role, that in a sense involves less expertise. It's kind of the whole system sort of thing. So there's that. Um, and and the other thing is then you what you also want to do is you do want to learn. And so uh, this past week we had a, uh, a consultant in who's got world class expertise in. Um, sort of data science and that sort of thing and it was amazing you know uh, fourth year PhD student um, you know just such expertise it was just unbelievable she, there, there was just simply nothing she didn't know you know and and the way you, you, you approach that is this was the greatest opportunity ever I learned more this past week than I probably have you know, in the last one year, and and what you do is you you just ask questions, and you you, you know you try to think about things you can't quite figure out, and, and you're trying to put stuff together, and you bounce ideas around, and you come at it with when you have an expert who works for you, what you want to do is pick their brain, learn from them, ask questions, and and there's actually a great book. Uh, Edgar Schein's Humble Inquiry, you, you know, this, this name here, you know, I reference this guy all the time. I mean, one of the other books he wrote is the whole reason I got a PhD in this, in this field was, you know, the insight this guy has is, is just unparalleled. Um, by the way, on TomArchConsulting.com on the, on the upper right, there's a pull down for additional materials and, and one of the um, tabs you can select on or, or in the pull downs is um, rec uh, recommended materials or something like that. And uh, that'll get you to a page where you'll see a picture of this book and you can either click on the picture and that'll take you to Amazon or right below it. I think there's a link that has like the ISBN or something. But the bottom line is you can get this and, and all the books, I think just about all the books I recommend are on that. And um, this one's great too. It's, it's a really small book. It's like 100 and I don't know, 20 pages or something. Um, and it's like 10 bucks on Amazon. And it's uh, recent information. It's like, it's like a 2013 book. And it really gets to this issue. And, and what he talks about is what you, his idea of humble inquiry is you want to not come at people adopting a one-up stance where you kind of have this tacit assumption that you know more and you're sort of looking down. I mean, um, you know, that's, you know, to be on the other side of that, that's, that's just annoying. You know, it's just arrogant. Um, but uh, rather than, than coming at it sort of always one up and, 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 you know, they say something and you've got to, you know, do that and so on. 
um, he proposes this model of humble inquiry. And his, his, idea, his thing, he says, is what you have to do is access your ignorance. And so what you want to do is sort of foster a truly curious spirit where you're really like, you know, if, if you don't understand something, something doesn't quite make sense, you can't quite, you know, put it together, is, is, is allow yourself to be curious, allow yourself, I mean, first of all, just admit, it, I don't understand this, you know, just kind of get over yourself. And, and access your curiosity and constantly ask questions. And, and that's very important, you know, because and, and that's sort of the opposite of that he talks about is, you know, leading by telling versus leading by asking. And I, I don't mean asking in the sense of, oh, you know, would you please do this? I mean, I'm all for that. I'm all for saying, you know, please do this rather than you know, do this or I'll fire you. I mean, you know, clearly you ask. But in the sense he's talking about, he's not talking about, you know, so the being polite and, you know, excuse me, sir, would you care to, you know, that sort of thing. He's talking about approaching people with a genuine curiosity and really trying to learn and uh, it has all these positive effects right it, it, it creates better relationships and sort of validates the person um, and you know it gets the, the, the it's the best way to get the information and I mean I, as a whole it's just simply a better approach um, you know to dealing with people in general and to deal with engineers in specific so uh, recapping, you know, what, what we're talking about here with these, these modern leadership paradigms is um, get over yourself. You know, the assumption that, you know, because you're the leader, you know more or something. Okay, that's just crazy. You, you, you know, there'll be times you know more. I mean, the, probably the reason you remain an engineering manager is because you've got some real, part of it's so you've got some real skill. And, you know, there'll be areas that you're, you know, better than anybody. And there'll be areas that you just simply have to listen. And it may be a 21-year-old kid who graduated, you know, a week earlier, they were coming in and they're going to know stuff you didn't because the, you know, they're just the, what they're teaching now is, is more up to date than what, you know, we, we studied at school 30 years ago or whatever, or 10 years, or even, even if, even if, you know, five years ago, it's, you know, the, the industry is progressing so much. So, um, the key then is to, um, learn from your experts and to pick their brain and just simply to get comfortable with the fact that, yeah, you know, most of the people you work for, I mean, hopefully all of them, there's areas where they simply know more than you and that's okay. And that's actually desirable because then you can fill the gaps. And, you know, one of my favorite lines from the, from the, I think it was Rocky too, you know, as Rocky proposes to Adrian and he says, you know, uh, Adrian, I got gaps and you got gaps and together, no gaps, you know, and, and, and that's the idea. At any rate, uh, thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich. I like to talk about uh, leadership and engineering. And by the way, yes, this is part of a shower door I just installed. This is a scrap I had to cut off. And uh, hey, if you like this video, you want to see some more, you can go to TomUlrichConsulting.com. There's a pull down link to all my videos. Um, hey, please subscribe. And what happens is YouTube will recommend you more as you get more subscribers. So if you, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe. They'll also recommend you more if you get likes so if you don't mind give me a little like there make a comment i'll respond to it and uh you can also just find me uh, rather than going through tomarchconsulting.com you can search on i think engineering leadership guy i think that's working more and more as the more of you subscribe the more that'll work and also if you search on dr tom Ulrich, that seems to work real well at any rate uh thanks for listening we'll talk to you next time